And the Saints today made the only decision they could make. And they went with the only actual starting quarterback on their roster in James Winston. I don't think that there's only two people or groups of people that thought this was going to be a real quarterback battle. People that Sean Payton had mind melded into thinking that his H-back utility player was actually a quarterback in Taysom Hill and Taysom Hill's friends, family, and the odd you know, bubbling Taysom Hill stands on Twitter. Taysom Hill is a useful player for your team. He's a devastating option for your team if he's your quarterback because he's not a quarterback. And while Jameis Winston has his warts, has his flaws, is a guy that over the course of his career averages more than one turnover per game, had a 30 interception season, he also is a guy who was the quarterback for one of the greatest college football teams ever, won a Heisman Trophy, won a national championship, almost won another national championship, and clearly has a ton of arm talent. Now, the decision-making has been disastrous. Maybe it was his eyes. He got LASIK surgery, or maybe he just, you know, makes bad decisions. It's probably the latter, not the former. But there's a chance, if Jameis Winston could just be slightly below average when it comes to turning the football over, he's a well above-average quarterback because he does have a lot of high-end ability. It's just the killer turnovers ruin you. So... To me, this was never a question. Even before Jameis had the excellent second preseason game, he unless you're going to go with Trevor Simeon or rookie Ian Book, those are the only three quarterbacks on your roster. Taysom Hill is a good utility player, running back, slot receiver, trick play quarterback, guy on special teams. He is not a starting quarterback in this league, and I'm glad that is finally put to bed. But if you're a Saints fan and you have enjoyed your team being not the A1 story, but throughout the offseason, you know, a leading story because of this alleged battle, I hope you enjoyed the coverage throughout the offseason. Because in the regular season, I hate to tell you, I don't think we're going to be talking about your team a lot. Whether it was Taysom or Jameis, no matter who the quarterback is, nobody is going to be able to fix the Saints' true problem for this season, which is... That credit card bill, they kept kicking down the road. They're transferring payments. They're doing a, uh, open up a new line of credit and transfer a balance. Uh, let me get a little special dispensation. That's come due. The Saints, understandably, and I support this, by the way, when you have an all-time great quarterback at the tail end of his prime, tried to squeeze every last bit of juice from that berry. Well, the berry has since retired, and now you have the thinnest roster in the NFL. You have you, you do have some very high-level players, obviously. You have Michael Thomas, but he's not there. Alvin Kamara, who's outstanding. An expensive offensive line. You have a D-line, my pal Cam Jordan, that was a pretty damn good D-line and defense last year. But as soon as you get past the upper crust of this team, once you get to the depth of the team, and once you get to the guys who are going to have to play once there are inevitable injuries, what you see is one of the thinnest rosters in the NFL. And despite the fact that was it Marco as Callaway was excellent this preseason, without Michael Thomas, you have a thin wide receiver room. And we don't have no idea when Michael Thomas is going to be playing. So I say all that to say this. The Saints have been one of the most relevant, interesting, competitive teams in the NFC the last 15 years. That's over. They borrowed from future you, future you, future you to do for today you. And unfortunately, they didn't get that second Super Bowl. They didn't get that second Super Bowl appearance. And now, whether it was Jameis or anybody else, the Saints are about to enter a period in the wilderness where they are paying off the debt they accumulated the final few years of the Drew Brees era. And the silver lining will be if Jameis can be a true starting caliber, high level franchise quarterback, then you found that relatively cheaply and you can start the rebuild. But whether the Saints want to admit it or not, this is year one of the rebuild. The Saints, as forget Super Bowl contenders, 
as playoff contenders, that ship sailed off into the sunset with Drew Brees and with the debt they accumulated for this year and future years, by the way. Cap situation's even worse next year for them, trying to win a last final Super Bowl or a second Super Bowl with Drew Brees. But they made the right decision at quarterback. That's the NFC South. We'll go to the NFC East. Yesterday, we talked about the Cowboys. And I said Cowboys' goal should be the NFC Championship, getting to that game and nothing less. Because winning that division is a given. It's a terrible division without another starting, proven starting quarterback in the division. So just saying win the division, just win the division, that is setting your standards way too low. And now you hear Dak Prescott not on pitch count, going to be full go. Let's assume Dak plays the whole season. It, the Cowboys are as sure of a thing to win a division as any team is, almost any team in the NFL. Or so I thought. But then I heard my buddy Greg Jennings on this show and my show, First Things First, and Speak for Yourself, make the case that all of a sudden, especially if you look to Vegas, a lot of people are echoing, and that's a case for the Washington football team. This is a team that, let's not forget, they lost to the Super Bowl champs in the wild card game in the playoffs last year. Eight points. Like, they were there, and they played a really good game. They have their, they have their defense locked in and loaded. They have weapons. They know who they are offensively. They're going to run the ball. They're going to turn around and hand it off and, and then get McLaurin and Logan Thomas involved. All these guys, like – I really like the Washington football team and their leadership with Ron Rivera and where they're headed. So with respect to my buddy Greg Jennings, who is, you know, almost as smart as he is handsome, and it's not a shot of his intelligence, he's just a, I mean, jarringly handsome man. And he's not the only one who thinks this. You can get the Washington football team, they're only two and a half to one to win the division. They're, they're just right nipping on the Cowboys' heels. But what everyone, everyone is remembering half of last year. What they're remembering is, and show the numbers, how dominant the defense was. And they're like, wow, does Washington have the best defense in the NFL? You could argue last year they did. Top five in almost everything that matters. Particularly, they were the best pass defense, in my opinion, in the whole league. And that's what matters more than anything. And there should be even better. Chase Young, a year better. Their first-round pick was a middle linebacker. Like, how good is that defense going to be? Let's say the defense is even better. Or at the very least, the exact same. Think about that for a moment. So you're remembering that. You're remembering they were competitive in the playoff game. But now remind yourself how they got to the playoff game. And what we were saying about the NFC East. How it was the worst division ever. And then how many games did, with that number one defense, arguably, in football, how many games did Washington win last year? Seven. Oh, because the offense was that bad. Oh, because they had no difference makers on offense, no established, uh, or no steadiness at quarterback. So despite having that defense, they won seven games. Well, how much did the offense improve this offseason? And the answer is, it didn't. I think we can show you their projected starters. It's going to be hard to find. Look at, forget the offensive line, which is fine. Sheriff's obviously a spectacular player. Just look at that first column on the left. It's hard to find three teams in the league with a less impressive group of guys. Fitzpatrick. If he's your starting quarterback, you're in trouble, and you know he's not going to start all year. And while Heineke looked good in the playoff game, there's a reason he hasn't been able to beat out Ryan Fitzpatrick. Antonio Gibson is a replacement-level running back. Terry McLaurin is a good wide receiver. But when the wide receiver position is the deepest it's ever been, you could name 15 guys better than Terry McLaurin. So he's an average number one receiver, Curtis Samuel didn't really work out for him in Carolina. Now he's with Ron Rivera in Washington. Adam Humphreys was a fourth or fifth option with Tennessee. Logan Thomas tied in. That offense, as bad as it was last year, there's no reason it should be better. None. So 
Unless your plan is in 2021, we're going to win football games 17-13. I do not know how anyone can advocate for any team other than the Cowboys to be winning this division. I just don't know. And that's not even saying the Cowboys are spectacular. That's simply doing the math on how many wins, what does a team with that offense max out win-wise? Last year, it was seven games. And then you look at the rest of the division. The Giants, Danny Drops is not going to win you a division. And the Eagles seem to be as dysfunctional at this point of any team in the league. Maybe Jalen Hurts takes a massive leap, but you got to see it. So for Cowboys fans and folks saying, hey, go win the division, you have to win the division. It is a massive failure if you don't win the division. There's no argument to be made in the world that the Cowboys shouldn't. If Dak plays all year, if he's not on a pitch count, as we heard Kellen Moore say, he's full go from week one, then the Cowboys not winning this division would be a categorical failure. I don't care how good the Washington defense is. That offense should be a bottom five offense in the NFL. And I'm again, I'm not hating. By the way, I like Terry McLaurin. But when you're in a league where when ESPN did its top 10 receivers, Amari Cooper, Justin Jefferson, Odell Beckham, Adam Thielen, none of them made the top 10. Beckham, Jefferson, Thielen, Cooper, not top 10 receivers. It's the deepest the position's ever been. If, if your receiver group is headlined by Terry McLaurin, he is an average at best number one, and your two and three are not great. Your running back is league average. Your tight end has never truly produced at any level yet in his NFL career. And your quarterback is Ryan Fitzpatrick. That is the recipe of a bottom five offense. You're not winning a division in 2021 with a bottom five offense. I don't care if your defense is the best defense in football. It's not happening. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.